Get your mind right, let's go. To my family, I am going to talk really quickly because I have a lot to get through in about two minutes. And so uh, today was a fasted workout, worked out at 1230. Uh, Tim and I had a leg workout and we wanted to get a lot of volume in within one hour. So we didn't have an hour and a half, two hours. Our rest times were limited. I would say on a squat, we took the most rest time right at about two minutes per set between sets. But on everything else, we were looking at about a minute to a minute and 15 seconds tops. And so the first movement that we did after warming up, you know, we did three sets with the bar, 15 to 20 reps, uh, 135, 185, 225, 275. And first working set here, 325 pounds. I wanted to complete three sets of seven reps. Now, looking at my squat form, I am feeling good. Um, I feel like I'm staying very tight. I'm happy with my depth. I'm happy with, I'm trying to keep my head more neutral. Uh, that's one of the biggest things I'm trying to work on, keeping my head neutral and not like, not popping my neck up and straining it. And so here you can see a nice, that was actually a seventh rep there. So that was the final rep. I'm um, happy with the bar speed. Now, I did say we trained fasted, so there's no food in my system going into this workout. Therefore, I felt like my strength wasn't 100% there, but you know, I'm not trying to blame anything on anyone or anything like that. But um, I wanted to get this workout done, one, quickly, and two, earlier in the day because I had a lot of stuff planned for later in the day, which you're going to see in the next few clips. But second movement, we moved on to a leg press. We used four plates and two tens. Uh, you can't see the tens here, but four plates and two tens for five sets. So five sets of 12 reps. Um, that may not sound too, too challenging, but when you're limiting your rest time to about a minute and just going back to back to back to back, <laughs> trust me, it gets very, very tough. Uh, next movement right here, focusing on, I don't like act. I don't like locking out. Um, therefore I don't like squeezing my glutes at the top because I like to keep the tension on my hamstring. So I go down, I come up just slightly above the lockout and that helps me keep tension on the hamstrings. Next, we moved on to the seated hamstring curl and supersetted it with a quad extension in order to save time once again. And the final movement was a standing calf raise, anywhere from six to eight reps. I like to keep it heavy on the standing, which is gonna target more of your gastrocnemius versus the soleus, which is more targeted when you are using a seated movement. That was it, guys. Uh, sorry I talked really quickly. Hopefully you took away some information from that, and I hope you all enjoy the rest of this video. I'll be back at the very end to do another commentary. Uh, just finished up the workout. Went to Chipotle, had the standard bowl, and now we are here downtown Houston at DVA Autosport. I want to surprise Nikki. Uh, she's been helping out so much with Outfit. Yeah, she's always been there. Um, really, we've been together almost two years. She's been with me through everything. And I uh, just wanted to do something nice for her. And so for the longest time, last few months really, she's, been, she's had her car. She's been talking about you know, blacking out the wheels and uh, she kind of picked out her rim. She wants to do the top black and sort of you know, make her car like a stormtrooper, white and black. And uh, she's never acted on it because there's so much going on. It's hard to drive her car off and stuff. About two and a half, three weeks ago, I ordered the rims that she's wanted. And it just so happens that that following week, she hit the back uh, trunk of her car and then someone hit her in the front a few months ago, and so there was two dings that she wanted to fix them. I told her, you know what, babe, let me take care of it. Uh, I'll get those dings taken care of. And what she didn't know is that, well, let's come out here real quick. What she didn't know is that I ordered the rims already, and so the rims are getting put on as well. So let me show you, it looks so good right now. This is it. So it looks so freaking sick. Now the dings, there's one right here on the front and one also on the back. And they're perfect, you can't even tell that anything is damaged. But I think the car looks phenomenal. She's gonna be, she has no idea, no clues, no hints, so she's gonna be really excited. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm actually going to send her a picture of where the ding was, right here, and tell her, hey babe, ding, you know, freaking good. I'll see you in a little bit, I'll bring you back. So. All right, so the texture, let say, you literally can't even tell. 
she'll be expecting that, and then we're gonna surprise her. Made it back to the warehouse, and Nikki is with Danae. They're on their way back right now. Uh, they should be back in about 15 minutes, and so I parked the car inside of the warehouse. Yeah, she won't know the car's here until she walks in through the offices, and then I'll take her in here and show her the car. And also, we saved her rims over here, uh, so when she wants to sell the car, she can put those back on and do something else with those. It looks so good though. Here's a, a view. All right guys, she's here. She's parked outside. So here we go. We're gonna hide the camera until we go to the warehouse. Hi, hi. Oh wow. Oh. God damn. <laughs> How's it look? Oh, my heart just dropped in my chest. I was like, something's different. How's it look? Oh, wow. It looks so cool. Oh, I'm so shocked. I'm excited. Oh, it's overwhelmed. Is that your shocked face? <laughs> it's like barely any emotion, bro. Check that out, guys. So sick. She's crying, guys. She's so shocked. She's excited as hell. Like at all. But really, look at the scratches, too, right? Faith is excited, too, obviously. Give him a kiss for the camera, though. Oh. <laughs> so cute. Look at that. It looks awesome. The rooms look good. Dude, we've known about this, this for a while. The surprise. We've known the about this for so long. The couch was the couch not the surprise. The couch was a distraction. Oh, my God. There's no I didn't know it at all. Oh, my gosh. I've never been so surprised. Look, look, look. That was good, baby. I can tell your nose right. is really oh, red. Wow. Your nose is quite red. I'm glad you think so. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, those are huge. Are they painted or are they new rims? No, they're powder coated. They're new rims and they're completely. Oh, the so old ones are over the there. Old ones. The old ones but are tomorrow we're going back because the, they uh, have the caps oh and they're going to give you black. Oh, yeah, they look a lot nicer. <laughs> <laughs> I, was so I was just like, something's different about my car. <laughs> you guys are either going to laugh at me or uh, <laughs> rocking the rollerblades. That's the only way I can tire her out, or tire both of them out. With him like, go for a 15 minute ride each. Man. Today is Tuesday, which means Gotham played yesterday and now it's available on Amazon. So we're about to watch Gotham episode five, season two. I think this is Nikki's current favorite show at the moment. Mm -hmm. And it's my top two for sure. Morning guys. Uh, this week, Manier Devore sent me, I think I said it right, Manier Devore sent me a bunch of their stuff. Uh, I was wearing one of their shirts yesterday, but this is very simple t-shirts, like the gray, black, uh, army green, actually camo. I really like that one. Let me bring the ISO up. I can see a little better. Got that one. Beige. Uh, some more stuff. They got me some jackets over here, which are really nice. And so... They hooked me up. I'm gonna link them in the description. They're not paying me to say that, but um, yeah, really good stuff. I'm gonna put the gray shirt on right now. Now I'm actually wearing the same, the black jeans by them. So, turn it off. Uh, this is a shirt. So I like this nice panel, and it's a good fit. It's nice and long. Uh, I like all my shirts, you know, workout short shirts or just going out shirts to be fairly long. My chest, my back, my shoulders make a lot of t-shirts kind of short on me. Generally speaking, like a lot of larges I buy will be short on me. So um, I like when they're long like this. So I do wear large and everything, tops wise. Do my hair real quick. And it's about 9.15 right now, 9.20. So 10 o'clock, got a meeting uh, with some developers. Uh, developers, architect, because we are going to start rough drafting a warehouse layout. Um, just to start getting estimates and things like that. So that's what's going on. Sorry, it's kind of high. That's what's going on. I will check with you guys in a bit. 
hands are all pasty. <laughs> we just had two or three people come in and Nala, Nox just barked and then Nala just wouldn't shut up. I told her to sit down and then she did sit down and she just kept howling anyway. She knows you're talking about it, but I said you turn like that. <laughs> so our guard dogs that don't do anything, they just make a lot of noise. Nox is officially bigger than Nala. Nala is 39 pounds, Nox is 50 pounds. Uh, what's going on family? I want to welcome you all to the commentary and I'm excited for this commentary because it's longer than the earlier one. I feel like the last one I was really rushing because uh, I didn't have too much time, but I like having more time so I can slow down a little bit and in my opinion I can get my point across a little bit better. And so uh, today was an arm day. Now looking at the last few months, I haven't really had an arm day and I'm just going to keep it 100% real with you guys, honest. Uh, coming off the deload, we had a, I had a chest back workout. I hit a leg workout and then which means it had been about a week like seven or eight days with no arm training and looking in the mirror I felt like my arms just look so small and uh, I've always been really skinny growing up keep keep this in mind at all times because I've been you know all of high school even eighth grade middle school uh, the same height I am now I haven't grown in height but those years I was literally at 40 to 50 pounds lighter than I am now. And so I was really skinny, really, really skinny. And so I have like a fear almost of like going back to being really skinny. So anyway, I train my arms today and uh, it's just the thing when planning your splits guys, it's so important in my opinion to yes, prioritize your goals, but it's also finding a balance of being sure that you're not neglecting other, other body parts really for me especially in the bodybuilding training even though i'm trying to emphasize my back and my legs i'm trying to be sure that i don't neglect my arms my shoulders my chest and so it's all about finding that balance and i've said this last time which i mean at this time i am going to sit down this week and really plan um the rest of my bulk out i've got a good amount of time left i want to say about six months five and a half, five to six months left in the surplus and i want to capitalize on all the gains possible but let's get to this workout uh, i'm going to sort of talk about everything started out with the barbell curl now the barbell curl is really a sort of it's not a unique movement it's just uh you know you're using two hands at the same time both arms are working and a lot of times myself included i'll have one arm um, sort of dominating whether it be on a barbell curl or you know a machine one arm takes over uh, that's normal. Don't worry if you guys are like that. One arm's probably bigger. My right arm right here, this guy's a lot bigger than this guy. You can't, it's a lot bigger. <laughs> and so um, what I've been focusing on recently is being sure that, say you're doing a barbell curl with both hands, right? Curling, curling, but instead of, you have a tendency to look at your strong arm because you know it's pulling the weight. You're looking here. I'm trying to look here and focus on my left arm, being sure that I'm squeezing with my left arm and activating that left arm as much as I can. So I'm focusing on this one, knowing that this one's going to be doing the work. Uh, same goes for any movement that you're doing, uh, you know, both legs or both arms or whatever at the same time. So that was the barbell curl, then moved on to a tricep pushdown, going really heavy on that pushdown. I think I did like, I think I did 150 pounds for eight to 10 reps, and I kept that weight for all sets. So, you know, staying locked in here with the tricep pushdown. And what I do is I be sure that when I come down, I squeeze, I'm sore right now, <laughs> I can feel that, but you're here, you literally squeeze it guys as hard as you can, and then you come up, squeeze, and also when you come up, check this out, I don't know if I think you can see them, but here, a lot of people come right here and go back down. I like to literally come here and actually go even higher and go all the way back down. And so, get that, you probably couldn't hear me that well, but get that full range of motion and it'll make such a big difference. Moved on to the alternating dumbbell curl uh, after that, which I focus on bringing my pinky up here and rotating it out. So if you see the bicep, if you see my bicep right here, so if you're curling here, I want, I want you to look at my bicep, what happens when I actually go here. See that activation right there? So I focus on bringing the pinky out to get that full contraction. Uh, next tricep movement was a overhead rope, which you're seeing right here. Uh, this, once again, on all tricep movements, I cannot emphasize the importance of the full range of motion and actually almost, it's almost like, you know, you can do a pause rep on bench, you go here, pause, explode, pause, explode, and that helps you off your chest. 
Well, think the same thing with your tricep. You're coming down, literally go as far as you can, pause, you're gonna feel an amazing stretch and then explode and squeeze up. So it's so, so crucial. Um, always remember that, guys. <laughs> tricep development. Uh, next movement, we did a, this is a very unique movement here. It's on the lat pull down machine. Now, you may not see a lot of people do this, but I want you all to try it out. Essentially, what you're doing is you're mimicking a skull crusher. Now, if you know what a skull crusher is, a lot of times you use an easy bar, you lay on a, on a flat bench or a decline bench, just come here, boom, boom. If you look at that, it's the exact same angle that I'm doing here, but I'm on a lat pull down, keeping the tension here at all times because it's a cable as opposed to a, uh, you know, a free weight. And so it's a really unique movement just focusing on staying down, coming over the forehead, keeping this part of your arm locked in. Keep that there. Squeeze. While this is the only thing moving right here. You're not moving this, you're just keeping this here. Squeeze, squeeze, and it's a really great movement. So try that out. It's just on a lat pull down machine and you're simulating a skull crusher essentially. So uh, final movement was a reverse curl. I'm just using 10 pounds and I'm keeping my thumbs over the bar uh, because you may, if you use your thumbs under the bar, yes, you'll be able to use more weight, but will it, by going over, it almost, in my opinion, activates your biceps just a little bit more because it takes away from your forearm and your grip. So everything here, we did four to five sets. We only did three for bicep, three for tricep, but like I said, we're not doing three sets. We're doing four, five most likely on average about five sets per thing. So that's it guys. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you in the next one.